Hi, I'm Rian from eTech TV, and we are here downstairs at the DGL 2014. Um, I'm talking to Steve Whitford. He's going to tell us more about what's happening this year and what we can expect to see, um, as well as uh, what teams are playing, what games, and um, hopefully uh, some of the prizes. Steve. Great. So, yeah, it's the Telcom Gaming Championships, uh, which you see behind me. Um, basically, there are about 500 gamers uh, who come here. It's the largest uh, competitive esports land in the country. And uh, those gamers are chosen from uh, the players in the DGL. So we've got about 5,700 gamers who play. And they play through the year um, in a league structure, not dissimilar to what you see in uh, you know, British Premier League football or Super Rugby, same kind of thing. And uh, they play in a league structure for seeding. And then basically the top, seed, top seeded gamers get invited to, to the DGC. And um, yeah, so behind me you'll see games, uh, gamers playing games like Battlefield 4 and Call of Duty Ghosts, um, uh, League of Legends, Dota 2, um, and we've got some races at the back doing GT6, and um, also got some console guys also playing Ghosts um, on Xbox, and um, yeah, so basically um, what you'll see behind me is a, a knockout competition um, of groups of up to 16 teams in a game. And what will happen is they'll play through group stages and then go into knockout stage. So they'll play tonight, a couple of groups, uh, start again tomorrow morning at about nine, play, finish with group stages in the afternoon, go out into knockout stages, get through to play semifinals in tomorrow evening. And then Saturday, uh, Sunday morning, they'll play the finals at 9 a.m. And uh, yeah, the guys are, uh, in total, there's a uh, prize money of over a million rand in cash and prizes. Uh, hardware, um, prizes like uh, the Alienware X51 that some of the top teams will be taking home. And um, yeah, so generally the prizes, they'll, uh, there'll be prizes um, dished out to the top, uh, top three teams. But I think for a lot of the guys, um, it's so much more than you know, about prizes or whatever. Like for them, they, they play in teams where they come from around the country. Um, they play on ADSL with Telcom. And you know, for them, this is a chance to get together the guys that they play with, with week in, week out. Um, a lot of these guys are playing 20 hours a week, practicing together, competing. So it's something that they take pretty seriously. And um, this is an opportunity where they can actually get together with um, you know, the guys that they play with week in, week out, uh, sit next to each other, play in an intense tournament format. And, um, and, and for them, it's also about you know, beating the guys who are seated close to them. So you know, the guys who are seated, say, you know, 10 to 16, those guys are all competing against, against each other to get one up on the competition. And um, yeah, it's fantastic to see rivalries going back. I mean, listening to the guys from DC and the Bravado uh, being interviewed. And, uh, you know, they've, they've been com kind of going head to head since like 2005, 2006. And, uh, you know, every year, um, you know, they're there and, and they're often in the final together. So, yeah, some of these guys have been playing a long time, know each other well, and keep coming back every year for the opportunity, opportunity to take each other on. So, that's pretty awesome. All right, and as I understand, there's quite a few uh, casting booths here of people live casting uh, many of the active games. Um, is that, I mean, that's something that's been happening for a, a few years, but is it picking up in South Africa? People actually starting to watch live casts, watching Twitch streams, and um, getting to see esports in a more like a uh, fan way because uh, for many years it's been a very enclosed thing. Your team is your only fans, but now people are starting to get traction, getting to get sponsorships and starting to get quite a few people watching their games and anticipating wins and losses. Yeah, so what we've done at Telcom is um, we, we've looked to promote um, an emerging casting community. I think, you know, it would be one thing for us to try and, you know, do it where Telcom does the casting, we get guys into cast, but I think what we found is that, um, you know, it's better to set up a, a, an environment where we encourage, um, you know, the casting community um, to, to, to spend time watching these games, shoutcasting these games, you know, so, so what is doing, you know, that, what that has done is, is created a group of specialist casters. And, and that means you've got guys uh, who are focusing in on a game and I mean, we can't be everywhere at once, they're 5,700 gamers. So I guess a uh, goal from a telecom gaming point of view is to stimulate activity within the community. So. What you'll see with some of the shot casting guys, we've got guys in, you know, from Nav TV, and you know, by by encouraging that within the community, and guys like Nav picking up the, you know, the ball and running with it, is you've now got guys who get to know the players, get to know the community, get to know the, the teams on a detailed level. It becomes, 
it becomes a thing that they do, they become specialized in. And, 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 and so from there, it just makes sense for us to you know, get the guys in and uh, allow them to cast. They know the teams, they know the players intimately because they've been watching them you know, for the whole year. So um, not only um, are the guys on, you'll see them on the end of the, the, the booths, but um, we've also got um, some IP cameras around stuck on the roofs and stuff. And uh, that just actually gives the, you know, the, the shot cast the ability to flick from in-game footage to uh, actual land footage. You know, you can focus in on the guys, like you, the, the guys streaming can see the passion, you know, see the excitement, see the tension um, with gamers. So I think what that does, like you said, is it opens up um, the ability for more and more for gaming to become a spectator, uh, a spectator activity where people are watching. And, and we're seeing that more and more with these, you know, with multiple uh, specialist casters uh, springing up that people are starting to watch those, you know, and uh, people overseas are starting to watch, you know, our, our gamers play and, you, you know, you're getting international casters starting to cast some of our games, international teams showing interest and, you know, the kind of prize money that we're starting to see here, you know, we're getting regular requests for international teams saying we want to come and play in this competition. Yeah. Um, so I mean, on that topic, uh, do you think that the competition is actively growing every year? There's more players, more teams, and better gameplay, better, more competitive. Yeah, and I mean, undoubtedly, if you, if you look at, I mean, we started out, you know, from scratch, you know, 2008, we picked up with, you know, a handful of gamers, a couple of hundred guys. Uh, we started promoting leagues, um, and we've been doing that uh, with Telcom since then. And, we're now at 5,700 gamers. So you've seen, you've seen every year we're growing year and year, and and and, and it was interesting. I mean, i you know we've been covering um, gamers playing since then, and and what you see is that uh, like the guys who got opportunities to go overseas, you know, one way or the other, invariably in like 2008, 2009, guys are going overseas. We were interviewing them when they came back, chatting to them, and they were getting trounced. You know, some guys, guys are going overseas. They're getting, they were getting 10, 15 minutes of gameplay in an international competition and getting dumped out. And, uh, and and what we've seen as a trend over the years, you see those guys, they're there for longer, they get further, and um, yeah, become more experienced. And it was, it was never really a skill issue. I mean, I think I was saying in an interview earlier, like, you remember having a guy like Trevor, Quickshot Henry, and uh, uh, he, you know, he was a card, card player, and um, the one year he got accused of cheating, because uh, the guy said he couldn't shoot that fast, you know? And we actually had to pull the guy in, and we sat down, and uh, and we got him to, you know, actually show us and play. And yeah, he could click that fast, you know. And uh, he was a champion here a couple of years, and now he's managed to get overseas, and he's uh, got himself a job with Riot Games, and he's shot casting lol, and he's going all over the world, you know. And um, so guys like him going overseas when they, you know, you know, they've been overseas with card and stuff, it was never a skill issue. It was a strategy issue. It was a teamwork issue. It was yeah. an understanding the players issue. And and that's where they got beaten. It was not they could shoot just as well as anyone else. But they got outplayed strategically, and what we've seen over the years is that's begin to change. So that the guys have become stronger strategically. Um, you know, the way they prepare, you know, get themselves ready. Um, so I think what you've seen is like, um, you know, on a level of, we've seen the strategy improve with the players and guys like, you know, Bravado playing this year, playing you know, um, international competition and winning it, playing from here online. You've seen broadband increase. You know, guys like Barry playing on, you know, Telcom on a 40 meg line gives them the ability to, you know, even play the guys overseas, even with a bit of lag, they're still competitive. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I think Telcom's, uh, you know, they said today, Viber's rolling out in December, uh, you know, they've identified target areas and they're starting to roll out Viber. So, I mean, that's going to boost us from a 10, 40 meg line right up to 100 meg, you know. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I think they'll be great. And, uh uh, you know, once we once you get even more broadband penetration, you get more people downloading games, playing games, you know? Yeah. So I think it'll be fantastic. All right. Thank you very much. That's been Steve Whitford for Talcom and Do Gaming. Uh, we are at the DGL 2014, and um, that's a basic overview of what you can expect for the next weekend and for the future of SA Esports.